Do a little dance. Do a little dance. Ta da! Hello, my people, and welcome to another winter edition of my mountain review series. I want to see mountains again! Mountains! Today we're talking about Killington, and why I think it's the best East Coast ski resort for most people. Throughout the video, I'll go over the basic info that I think you need to know if you plan to visit the area yourself, and towards the end, I'll go over some pros and cons and share my thoughts based on my own personal experience skiing there. But, before we get into that, just a little tidbit for those of you who don't know. On this channel, I'm all about sharing my thoughts and experiences on the best spots to check out and the best gear to bring with. So if, like me, you want to spend more time outside appreciating the finer things in life, do yourself a favor and consider subscribing. Also, feel free to check out the description below for links to any of the gear or information resources I mention. Alrighty then, without further ado, let us begin. Yeah! Oh Most mountains try to sell you on one feature or another, Killington's sheer size allows the resort to dominate on all levels across the board. The resort boasts a whopping 5 base area lodges, 22 chairlifts, and 2 gondolas that grant you access to 1,500 acres of skiable terrain over the mountain's 155 trails. The mountain accommodates skiers and riders of all skill levels and sports the single largest bunny hill I have ever seen. Anywhere you go, there are lime green mountain ambassadors waiting to answer your questions and the gear shops and rental locations are so numerous you'll be stupefied by the sheer number of options. I'll get into more details about the accommodations and amenity type stuff in a couple minutes, but first I want to talk about the mountain itself. The resort has a total of five main peaks, seven if you count Pico and Sunrise. Sunrise Mountain is kind of off to the side and is mainly an access point for the ski in, ski out Sunrise Condo Village, and Pico Mountain is like this whole other ski area, so I'm gonna leave those two out of this video, but they're there, just so you know. So yeah, for an East Coast mountain, Killington is pretty freaking huge. My first year there, I basically spent the entire week just exploring the mountain. In subsequent years, I started spending more time in specific areas that I'll elaborate on in a bit, but before we get into the nitty gritty, I want to first give you a basic overview of the map as a whole so that we can then break it up into some more digestible chunks. Okay, here we go. So as I just mentioned, Killington has five main peaks. Killington, Sky Peak, Ramshead, Snowden, and Bear Mountain. You can't really tell from the way the map is laid out, but even though you can technically access more trails from the top of K1, Sky Peak is much more centrally located and accessible, and I would even go so far as to call it the de facto main peak of Killington. If Sky Peak is like downtown Killington, then I would say that Skyburst and Superstar are kind of like the main street of downtown Killington. At least that's how I like to look at it. Most people will likely start their day here, at the Snowshed Lodge, which is part of the main base area. It's the closest lodge to both the hotel and most of the condo complexes in the area. And despite being the only base area that does not grant you direct access to any of the main peaks, it is the funnel point for this whole learn to ski area where all the beginner lessons take place and you can pretty much ski there directly from the top of every lift except for the lifts that go to the top of Bear and Sunrise Mountain. From Snowshed, you can either walk or ski through the tunnel to Ramshead, which mainly consists of terrain park runs, or you can take one of these two lifts up the Snowshed slope where most of the ski lessons take place. From the top of the Snowshed Express Quad, you basically have two options, Skyship or K1. 
If you come down High Road or Northbrook Trail, you can get on either of these two quad lifts, or you can take the Skyship Gondola at Stage 2 to Sky Peak from which you can access pretty much everything skiers right of the K1 Lodge. Or you can take Highlander to the K1 Base Area and take the Gondola to Killington Peak from which you can access most of the resort minus a few runs on Bear Mountain. If you're a beginner and you want to explore more of the mountain, just keep in mind that the least difficult trails from the top of K1 are all blue square runs. All the easier green circle runs that are outside of the Learn to Ski area can only be accessed from Sky Peak or by taking the Superstar Express Quad from the K1 base area. So just keep in mind that if you get on the K1 gondola, you can't access any green runs without first taking a blue. If you saw my last video about Mount Snow, you'll know that Glades are my preferred flavor of ski trail. My absolute favorite run at Killington is this teeny tiny little shoot off of bear tracks called a roundabout. Sadly, one of the main downsides of East Coast skiing, especially in this day and age, is that most tree runs don't open till later in the season once more snow is accumulated. I have yet to see a ski resort that actively blows fake snow into the woods, but who knows, maybe one day. So yeah, if you're a ski resort snowblower manager, just know that you could do great things if you would only try. Nevertheless, due to thin snow coverage, I've been forced to explore and discover other parts of the mountain that I would typically overlook when the snow conditions are good. And since most of the days I've skied at Killington were in early January, over the years I've come to appreciate more kinds of ski runs than I would have expected from a stubborn schlubby curmudgeon like myself. I'll talk about my other favorite runs in a minute, but first I want to talk a little bit about how to strategically plan out your day in order to maximize your exposure to the best conditions. If you're a more advanced skier or rider who likes to carve at high speeds, you need to hit the best runs first thing in the morning, when the corduroy is fresh. Killington is a very popular mountain, so the best runs typically get skied out pretty early on in the day, especially on weekends and holidays. In terms of the more popular centralized runs, Superstar is probably the most highly exposed trail at the resort, so if it doesn't get skied out, the wind will blow away everything but ice before lunchtime. So if you want to hit Superstar, hit it first. The top half of Skyburst is a bit more protected from the wind, so it maintains much better conditions throughout the day, but this whole area around Wildfire and the bottom half of Skyburst gets very skied out in the afternoon because of all the traffic that converges at this point here. The more gradual slope on the bottom third of Skyburst helps maintain the coverage for a bit longer compared to the steeper slope on Wildfire, but that just means that after Wildfire gets skied out, this whole section here becomes even more of a cluster. Luckily, the line for the Sky Peak Express quad moves pretty quickly, but yeah, nine times out of ten, I'd rather ski the ice on Wildfire than try to navigate through the masses on the bottom section of Skyburst. When the snow conditions are good, Bear Mountain is the place to be for the more advanced skiers and riders. Don't get me wrong, the main face of Killington has more options and is amazing when the snow is deep and the weather is mild, but again, I prefer Bear Mountain for the simple reason that you're not getting absolutely lacerated by the wind that whips through Killington's main face. Yay! Yay! Now, obviously, you can't make the first chair every time you go skiing, especially if you're just driving up for the day. So if when you get there, most of the black diamonds are skied out, or if you just prefer green and blue runs, this is going to be the part where I talk about all my favorite trails that I briefly alluded to earlier when I said that the lack of snow in the glades forced me to appreciate the kinds of runs that I tend to overlook in the first few times I visit any given resort. So in my last video about Mount Snow, I spoke a bit about growing up skiing at smaller mountains like Mount St. Severin and Ski Moor and Heights. And the reason I bring that up is because I remember feeling the intense burning in my quads the first time I skied a longer run at a larger resort, which was immediately followed by an intense sense of appreciation for not having to get back on a chairlift after every 30 seconds of skiing. And so with that sentiment in mind, there are two trails at Killington that I would very much like to highlight, without which I may have never learned to appreciate the simple art of the cruiser.
First, let's talk about Bear Cub. Bear Cub is a green circle run that can be accessed from either the top of Bear Mountain, Sky Peak, or K1. You can also get there from the top of the Superstar Express Quad if the line for the K1 gondola seems too long, or if you don't want to take a blue to get to the green. The trail officially starts at the base of the Southridge Quad and runs all the way out to Sunrise Mountain before it even intersects with another trail. It starts with a nice decline that you should use to pick up as much speed as you possibly can, because the trail then turns sharply to the left, revealing a wicked long straightaway full of fun rollers and some other little natural features off to the right hand side. And this is the part where a lot of snowboarders tend to get stuck and have to undo one of their bindings. So make sure to carry some momentum with you by carving wide around the turn going into the straightaway section. We're gonna do a slingshot, okay? Ready? Anyway, when the slope starts to increase, you basically have a couple options. You can A, use the slope to pick up speed going into this zigzaggy section, which is awesome if you can carve your way through the whole thing without slowing down. Or option B, you can duck into this little gladed patch over here. I don't know if this is an actual trail, but there are always ski tracks going in right about here. Just make sure that you don't fall into this ravine over here. Seriously, I claim no liability for your injuries. I'll probably get into the story a bit more in another video, but yeah, one time, about seven or eight years ago, I popped into the woods on a similar looking entryway at Stratton, and before I knew it, I was lying face down on a bunch of boulders in a stream, and my left shoulder is still messed up to this day. So yeah, be careful and remember that by crashing, you earn negative radness points. So let that be a lesson to you. Once again, Finer Bub assumes no liability if you fall into a trench or down this ravine over here. The second epic cruiser that I would like to highlight is called Great Eastern. In Ski Club, there were days when we would just hit this run over and over and over again. We'd get like 30 of us to all start at the same time and just cruise all the way down to the bottom of Skyship. It takes like 10 minutes, it's awesome. You can make both of these runs even longer by starting from the top of K1 and taking Bear Tracks to Bear Cub or Bear Tracks to Launch Pad to Great Eastern. Bear Tracks to Bear Cub is also great because when it's open, you can hit the roundabout glade on the way down. The park rats among you will rejoice to learn that Killington does have a few terrain park runs over the years. They've hosted the Dew Tour and a bunch of other competitions, so yada yada yada. They're all tried and true, I just don't talk about it that much because I suck at park skiing, and you're probably better off learning about that from someone who knows what they're talking about. So yeah. I've been practicing my pops though. Okay, so now that you have a basic overview of the trail map, I'm gonna take a few minutes to talk about the accommodation options at Killington in addition to the non-skiing related amenity type things. The first time I skied here was exactly 10 years ago at Killington College Week during the winter break of my freshman year at UMass. Out of all the trips I went on with Ski Club, every year Killington College Week was by far the best deal. It was like 450 bucks for five and a half days of skiing plus the five nights of base area lodging. Great deal. Over the years, I've stayed in a few of the different condo complexes, stayed in Mountain Green a couple times, stayed in Pinnacle a couple times, and then last month, my wife put together this amazing ski weekend for my 30th birthday. And that was actually the first time I stayed in the Trail Creek condos. You basically get the same types of things in all three of the condo areas. They were all designed with that sort of open concept, kitchen, dining, living room combo with a TV and a fireplace. And then there's usually a couple bedrooms and bathrooms either around the corner or up the stairs, depending on which of the places you're staying in. Trail Creek definitely has the shortest walk to the Snowshed Express Quad, but you can also take the shuttle, which comes around to all the condo areas every 15 minutes or so. If you do decide to stay in one of the condos and you plan to cook most of your own meals, just be sure to do whatever grocery shopping you need to do before you make the drive up. There is a small shop in town that makes some pretty dope sandwiches or you can get some of the bare necessities, but just keep in mind that there is no full-size grocery store. Whether or not you plan to buy groceries or eat most of your meals out while you're up there, groceries or not, the chili bread bowls in the K1 Lodge are, in my opinion, the one mountain meal worth shelling out some dough for. Okay, now let's talk about parking. Due to Killington's popularity, parking can fill up pretty quickly at both K1 and the Ramshead Snowshed parking areas. However, the Skyship and Bear Mountain base areas have plenty of parking for those who arrive a bit later in the day. 
But if you decide to stay at either the Killington Hotel or one of the many condos in the area, you can, as I said, easily make the quick door to chair walk or take one of the many shuttle buses that come around every 15 minutes or so. So there's obviously a lot more things I could say. Most of the information you'll need to visit Killington is on their website, killington.com. Sometimes I say things like, and that's really all there is to it. But in this case, it's not all there is to it. This is a huge mountain and yeah, I could go on for hours. I've told you about some of my favorite runs. There are definitely a lot more great ones, but it's worth going there for yourself to explore around because part of the greatness of Killington is just how big it is. And when you go there for the first First time you can just wander and it's just the first mountain that I've ever been to that was really like that yeah it definitely left an imprint on me as I said the first time I skied here was exactly 10 years ago just before my 20th birthday I'll never forget that feeling I got when I drove over the ridge and saw the mountain for the first time even though the peaks were shrouded in fog I was completely shocked by the sheer size of what I was able to see Ten years later, I had the pleasure of returning to the beast to celebrate my 30th birthday, and even though I typically try to avoid the mountains during these busy holiday weekends, I've got to say that I had an absolutely epic time. There's just so much room for activities! After several weekends, day trips, and four Killington College weeks, I can comfortably say that for most people, Killington Ski Resort is the best option east of the Rockies. So there you have it, folks. I want to wish a very warm welcome to those of you who are new to the channel. If this is the first video of mine that you've seen, I just want to let you know that I also make camping and hiking videos in addition to the skiing videos like this one. So if you're curious about some of the outdoor gear I use or you just want to learn about some exciting new places via yours truly, I'll leave some links down below that should suit you uh, quite nicely. Alrighty, my people, that concludes this episode of the Finder Bub Show. If you've already been to Killington, or you're thinking about checking it out for the first time, or if you have any suggestions for where I should go skiing next, I'd love to have you comment below, especially if you think your insight can help me disprove something that I think I already know. But before you do, I just want to once again thank you oh so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you're planning your next trip or looking for new gear, don't let the small details stress you out. Remember, life's an adventure. So relax, breathe in the outdoors, and don't forget to appreciate the finer things in life. See you out there, people. Peace. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the crotch tree. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's a hard one. <laughs>